We do record all of these meetings um, for people who aren't able to attend in person. Uh, but I'd like to welcome everybody to our latest installment of the Iowa OER webinar series. We hold these regular sessions for people working on various types of uh, OER projects in our state and also beyond. If you have any topics that interest you that we haven't covered yet or something that you know is of particular interest, you can always send us um, a message through the OER Google group, um, which is which you should be able to find through our website, which I posted in the chat. My name is Mariah Burnett, and I'm the Scholarly Communications Librarian at the University of Iowa. And today I'm joined by Abby Elder, the Open Access and Scholarly Communications Librarian at Iowa State, and Denise Crafting, who is the Instructional Designer for AEA Learning Online, which is part of the Iowa Area Educational Agencies, for those of you who don't know that acronym. Um, so as part of our work with the Iowa OER Action Team, Denise, Abby, and I, well, mostly Denise and Abby, developed uh, the Iowa Colleges and Universities Group on OER Commons, which is um, kind of one of the large OER platforms that you can use to find um, existing OER. So this group allows Iowa professors, teachers, librarians, and others to find OER that's been used and created um, within the state. And it allows members to post um, the OERs that they've been using as well. So today, um, our webinar will be a slightly different format than what it often is. It will be more of a show and tell. And so Abby and Denise um, will, will go ahead and kind of show you what they've, what they've done and, and um, we'll take questions after, after the show and tell. So um, I'll ask that everybody keep their mics muted for now. Um, and then if you have any questions or anything comes up during the demo, just feel free to type it in the chat and we can, we can go from there. And then after the session, we'll be sure to take questions from, from from you all if you're interested. So um, I will now turn it over to Abby and Denise. Alrighty, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen first. Hopefully you can hear me. Wonderful, okay. So uh, present mode. And there we go. All right. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name again is Abby Elder. I'm the Open Access Librarian at Iowa State. And today, Denise and I are going to be talking a little bit about Iowa colleges and universities, uh, the Google, the, the group within OER Commons. Uh, Denise, do you want to introduce yourself anymore? Or do you think Mariah basically got, got it? I, I think you've got it. I, I'm glad to be here with all of you. The uh... I, the link to this presentation is also posted in the chats so that you have access to it uh, during that conversation as well as once we are done. So yeah. well, welcome to all of you. Yeah, welcome everybody. So like Mariah sort of intimated earlier, uh, this is gonna be a little bit different than our other webinars. It's gonna be a lot more discussion, show and tell, fun times, and a little bit less of the us sharing something with you and getting your feedback on it. And one way that it's slightly different uh, is because we've got a uh, Kahoot to start off today. So if you could go to www.kahoot.it and use this code, you can get into our game, uh, which I'll just go out to. The code will still be on the page I'm about to go to, so don't worry about losing that uh, once I just ignore that. All right. So once you guys get in, this is a bit of a pretest uh, <laughs> to see what you know about OER and OER Commons going in and basically what the lineup of people attending today's webinar are. Feel free to use whatever name you want. Uh, you do not have to worry about uh, sharing too much if you don't want to. You can just be cool person 69, whatever. <laughs> And once I've got about uh, 10 people in, I'll go ahead and get started. I know we have <laughs> cool person 13, there you are. If you're having trouble getting in, just post it in the chat and I can help you as well. Denise is a Kahoot wizard I've learned. All right, I'm going to assume that everyone made it in that wants to and everyone else just doesn't want to participate in the Kahoot and that is okay. 
Ah, there's two. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'll wait one more second. All right. Now we'll get started. All right. So uh, for our little webinar today, I want to start off by asking, how familiar are you with OER? So are you sort of at the start of your journey with this? Are you, do you know a little bit about it? Or do you consider yourself an expert? Just to get an idea of who our group is here today and how much experience you have with this. So somewhat familiar to very familiar. I have a feeling at least one of you is actually an expert uh, level, but not wanting to say so, but good to know. Moving on, I don't have uh, scores attached to most of these. So true, false, do you have an OER Commons account? Just a general account with OER Commons, the tool, yes or no? All right. A few yeses, some noes. So this will be a good experience for some of you to learn a little bit more about the platform. Have you ever used our OER Commons group to locate OER? So even if you don't have an account, have you used the group before? No, once, twice, a couple times, or all the time? Do you look at the group and see what's been posted there? A good mix. All right. So this is a pretty good uh, showing of even if you don't necessarily have an account, you might still be able to use our group to find some resources. And finally, the very last one, uh, are you a member of our OER Commons group? And this will depend, of course, do you have an account in OER Commons, but are you a member of the group specifically? And about the same number. Okay, so that tells me a little bit about who we've got in here today. It seems about half of you are familiar with the group or using it in some way, and the other half of you just want to learn a bit more. So let's hop back over to our presentation, and I'll talk a bit about what OER Commons is for those of you who aren't too familiar. So there are a whole lot of OER repositories available these days. Uh, <laughs> Too many in some cases. Uh, so there's Open Textbook Library for if you're just looking for textbooks. There's MetaFinders like Mason OER MetaFinder, which we just had a blog post written up on. There's things like Oasis. And then there is OER Commons. And OER Commons is good for two really big things. Uh, first, it's both a repository and a referatory, which means it contains things people post there, and it contains links out to external content hosted on other websites. Uh, and it has things like groups and hubs where you can curate sets of content that you want to share out with a community. So one of the reasons why we use OER Commons for this thing <laughs> is that it is a, a public digital library of OER. It's very simple and easy to use. And coming from Denise's background, uh, it's also very popular in the K-12 space. So folks at Iowa AEAs have a lot of resources to work with for students that are in uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, and then even up into community college, college, and past that, even into professional and technical careers. So we're going to move on next to a bit of a show and tell about how to use OER Commons, and I'm going to stop sharing so Denise can take over from here for a little bit. You will need to unmute yourself, Denise. Awesome. I'm muting myself. See, I'm glad somebody's telling me. Is everybody seeing the show and tell on their screen the, the, that Abby was sharing with you? So I put the link to the presentation in the chat so that you have this. But on the Kahoot, I saw that there were several of you that did not have um, an account in OER Commons. And so this screen just takes you through how to add yourself and, and create an account. The biggest reason you'd want to have an account is so you can contribute. Uh, you don't need to have an account, as, as some of you have already found out, to go in and find and use the content. But if you want to add content, build content in OER Commons, add content to the 
um, OER Commons group of which you would be uh, a member of, then you need to you need to join OER Commons. And so this uh, page is for later for when you um, decide that you want to create an account and it's pretty easy to do. The one big thing that I think was probably the most problematic um, when, when I've done a lot of work with other teachers and things is that you actually have to go over here after you click register to register your account. I have way too many people who think once they click the first register, they can just put the stuff in on the left side. So just make sure that you're dealing with the, the side on the right. Okay, so let me uh, clear that out. And we'll go on to the next slide. So there are uh, a lot of different components inside OER Commons. Um, the AEAs got together and we have purchased a hub of which the uh, universities and colleges OER group are a part of. And so this is basically what the hub looks like. There is a link on the bottom and I'm gonna take you into that. Um, and I'd like you to come along. And Abby, if you would be so kind as to take that URL to the hub and put it into the chat for those that don't have uh, the link directly to the presentation, that would be very helpful. But once we get in there, there are a few things we're going to see. Um, we're gonna take you into post-secondary OER collections and we'll talk more about this when we get there. We're going to take you into the OER group and Abby's gonna talk just a little bit about that when we get there. But for right now, let's go ahead and go into um, OER Commons. If you would do that, please. And actually, if you are a member, I'm going to show you this. If you are a member and you go directly into OER Commons, just the main part, and under hubs, you will see us. I'm at, we're at the very, very top on my hub, but you may have to search and find it. You will see the Iowa AEA OER hub link as well. So if you should lose the hub link, which you know it's it's sometimes difficult to, to have all these things, if you just go into OER Commons, and go into the hubs, you would be able to find us. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and Abby has posted that in the chat for you. And once you're in here, you are going to see the Grant Wood painting. We put that in as our background. So that distinguishes our hub from any other hub in the world. And there are many other hubs as well. The first thing I said I would take you into, if you scroll down a little bit, are the collections of content. And the collections of content dealing with post-secondary is over on the right. And so if you were to click on this link over on the right, this will take you into the content that's already been added and tagged. And there are a series of tags that are in the, uh, the linked information that Myra put on at the very, very beginning, if you would do that again for us, for those that may have come in after, I greatly appreciate that. But this allows you to click and look. So you don't have to search, you don't have to do any other types of things. You could just click on the item that you want more of that has been tagged. And what you will find in here then are the OER Commons content that has been produced and shared as part of the Iowa Colleges and Universities. And Abby, if I'm saying anything that needs to be clarified, please jump in. Um, so once you're in here, you could scroll through, but you can also filter based on what it is you're looking for. So if there's certain material types, if there's certain um, other educational levels, but most of this is gonna be post-secondary. So the educational levels may or may not be relevant, um, but you could see different things as you need to filter it. As this becomes bigger, you know, 20 isn't too much to look through, but if this becomes quite big or massive, the filtering is going to be something that's going to be very, very important. You can also search um, within this group or within this collection by searching at the top. Okay. And so I can go back to Iowa OER by clicking on the upper left hand link here. Before we move on, are there any questions on the collections?
I see there are some things in the chat. Let me take a look. Okay, everything looks good. Um, Amy, you mentioned you're a member under your Gmail account. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter what account you guys use as long as you remember that account. I have had um, people, well, that's interesting. I have had individuals that um, forget who they are. I can't help you if that happens. Um, and that's something you'll have to work out with OER Commons, whether or not uh, you know what your account information is. Sure, sure. I just logged in as my work email. So I thought if you were checking that, you would see somebody different in there. <laughs> no worries. That's perfectly fine. Thank you for, for, for going through that. All right. Since there's no questions on the collection, uh, Abby, do you want to go ahead and, and continue with the presentation and then talk about um, the uh, collection of content that we are as part of our group and why we have this? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me go ahead and go back in sharing my screen. So we're just playing a little bit of tag right now. All right, tag team. All right, so next up here, I've got the Iowa OER group itself. Uh, so we just talked about the Iowa OER, the Iowa AEA's community, the hub, and the hub's just a website that is a collection of content that the Iowa AEA specifically have pulled out, brought into those collections, those sort of disciplinary subsections, and sort of made their own. And within the Iowa AEA's hub, there are different groups, which are sets of people uh, that are, you can think of them like clubs, <laughs> subsections there, that also have their own collections of content. So what the Iowa uh, Colleges and Universities group is for is to share content either created or used in the state of Iowa. It's divided into disciplinary subsections like Denise just showed off and content is added to, uh, is added to the collection two ways. Either members can add them directly by linking them from other things that are posted in OER Commons, or if you add your content to the OER used in Iowa Colleges spreadsheet, uh, which we check every fall and spring to see if people have adopted OER in the state, uh, then we'll add them into the group ourselves if it's something new that hasn't been added already. So for example, this is the spreadsheet right now. It shows by term, by department, by course. Of course, it's gonna change across universities, uh, but what resources are being used at different universities across Iowa? Uh, I've populated a lot of this, but it doesn't mean that uh, we're the only ones. Northeast Iowa has a lot of good stuff going on too. Uh, but this is a great place to see generally uh, what people are using and to share what you're using at your colleges for OER. But a spreadsheet can be a little bit clunky. So us bringing it into our collection is one way that we can get around that and make it a little bit more user friendly. So let's go out and show you how the group works. So from the Iowa AEA OER hub, you've got down here those collections that we were just mentioned post-secondary is its own section here and if you go down past that here's groups so the groups for the Iowa AEA's uh, hub are the AEA's themselves makes sense <laughs> the Iowa Department of Ed curriculum groups so groups looking at curriculum for different areas Iowa districts if you want to look by district and finally post-secondary so that's the colleges and so Iowa colleges and universities is ours We've got 22 members, 123 resources. And if you wanna find out more about like the tags that are used to put content in different categories, you can check that out in the link up here at the top of the page, as well as information about criteria for adding information, adding resources to our group. So we've got folders for professional development. If you're learning about OER, uh, agricultural sciences, arts and humanities, business and communication, education, engineering, English, and by default, by default, it will show you everything throughout all of them, and then you can click on a specific folder to see what's inside of that one. Uh, if there's a little button here next to a folder, that means there are other subfolders within it that you can look a little bit closer. So for example, if I were to click on music, I'd see that there's two music resources here, open music theory and tutorial videos for class piano. 
Now, that doesn't mean those are all the resources there are that are OER for these courses or even aligned to courses in Iowa. It just means these are the ones created in or used in Iowa courses that we know about. So if you have a professor that's using a different music theory or music textbook and they want to put it in this collection, then we can add that OER here too, just to make sure other people can find, hey, what might be useful for my own course. But that is the basics of the Iowa OER group. You can also join the group to learn more about it. So like I showed, you go down to the group section and click on it here. And why might you actually wanna join the group? So you don't need to be a member to use it. Like I just showed, all you have to do is navigate to the group itself to find and use the information there and look through our resources. But when you do join the group, it means you can add materials to it from OER Commons and you can submit resources to be added for other people to find. This is good for a couple of reasons, in part because everybody can then find more OER that are useful and used throughout the state, and also because it's a way for you to connect more with the community and keep track of things that are being added and grown uh, throughout the group's content. But that's really the basics of it. Uh, it's a fairly simple process, but it's really useful for making it easier for, easier for people to curate, collect, and share content that's used across the state's colleges. Because a lot of the time when you're searching for OER, especially in a repository like OER Commons that's so big, it can get easy to get lost or to get confused or to find things that are just completely irrelevant for what you need. So making sure that these are aligned with college level courses that are taught throughout the state and useful for our local context is a really huge deal. One of the questions you're probably going to ask, so I'm going to answer it ahead of time if that's okay, Abby, yeah. uh, is what is the difference between the collections and the groups? You're going to find very much the same content in both places as long as whoever adds the content to OER Commons tags it with the tags that, that Abby was mentioning to you. Once content has been tagged, it'll become part of the collections. Once it's been added to the group, you would determine which folder you want to put that in or that it, it, it most likely aligns. And so really, you should be finding most of the same type of content in both places. It's just whatever, whatever works for you in the method that you think. Um, not everybody thinks the way Denise thinks and not everybody thinks the way that Abby thinks. And so we want to make sure that However you best look for content, you're able to find out what you want. Does that make sense? And that's a very good point, yeah. So let's go ahead then and get to the sort of end of this presentation, which is questions. <laughs> if you want, we can just stop sharing our screens now and uh, talk to you all more, quote unquote, face to face, uh, but that is, the gist of it, we had a pretty short presentation today because we wanted to have this be a more open ended discussion about the OER Commons platform, what you might use it for, and if you have any other questions about how it works. As well as give you time to go in and explore. Let, let's, you know, spend a little bit of time in there, see what you have found, what you, how, how it na navigates for you, uh, what questions you have before we turn you loose. Abby and Denise, this is Anne Marie from you and I. I had a question. Um, I had been using the spreadsheet as a way to identify um, things that are used at other institutions um, to try to convince some of our faculty who teach the same course or a similar course. Oh, or you know, your colleagues at Iowa State who teach that course are using this resource. You might consider that. Um, do we see in those records in OER Commons that the course information is there as well? No, that is not one of the things we track in part because there's not an easy metadata field for it. Mm -hmm. We'd have to just add a tag and then it would be on the tag for the resource for everyone else in OER Commons as well. Uh, so it being added in the first place shows that it's used somewhere, but not in which class. And that's why we haven't completely gotten rid of the spreadsheet. It's still being used and updated. Okay, that helps. Thanks. I, I find both are really useful, kind of almost for different reasons. Yeah. I think the visual of the OER Commons hub is really useful for users, 
Mm -hmm. um, sort of, I do it more on the back end with the spreadsheet because I might want more of that that additional metadata. We we could, if you think it would be beneficial, add the spreadsheet as an OER link inside of the hub, and so something to process that way. You you would always have that. And, that, and again, that's just something to think about. Um, if that's something that would be important to you, let Abby know and we can work through adding that so that it's always found by whoever needs to have access to it. Yeah, we could do it similar to how we have on the homepage, the bit.ly link for, hey, this is how you add a resource and how you join. We could have the same thing of, and if you wanna share that you've adopted something this year or that your institution has something, you can add it to the spreadsheet. Right. Yeah, that would be helpful in that kind of initial description. Yeah, the uh, the individual who posted the actual links in OER Commons is the one that would have the right to edit it. And that's one of the reasons it's not a collaborative um, work in process when you put the content in. The only thing that is would be unique would be the um, tags, as Abby has mentioned, and the uh, you can go in and, and use a survey. The OER um, has a really great uh, survey that would help you determine whether or not this has this has validity uh, in the classroom. Thank you, Anne Marie. Any other questions? Or comments. Comments are also good. <laughs> a quiet group today. I think you all need your coffee this morning. Is that what it is or your <laughs> caffeine? Well then, what I'm going to ask is for any of you who are interested, I will get a link up in here. Uh, go out to the group. <laughs> it's all right, Amanda. Uh, go out to our group. I've got a link in the chat. And see if you can find one or two resources that maybe you didn't know exist yet uh, in whatever area you might be interested in finding something. Uh, just take a little bit of a minute and see if you can explore it and find things you want to, or if you might find something that you think this is in the wrong folder, let us know and we can get that fixed as well. And I see Tiffany you've added yourself i'm going to go ahead and approve those of it that have added them. Once you've found a few things go ahead and give us a thumbs up so that we know that you you're being successful in your endeavors. And if you're stuck on a phone call, just put up a thumbs up so that we know you're okay. <laughs> Good, Anne-Marie and Teresa, going well, okay. And Mindy has a question. So the spreadsheet I showed you is linked on the main OE Iowa OER website under our resources tab, uh, but I can also put the link in the chat for you. I'm just going to talk because I think it'll be easier than typing. Okay, so I'm on the link that you just sent us, like the www.org commons yep. slash group slash Iowa colleges university slash six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's under group resources. No, that is, uh, let me. Sorry. Oh, no, oh. you're good. Go ahead and show your screen, Abby. They're, they're still working fine. Yeah, I will do that. Uh, da, da. So our main website uh, for Iowa OER is iowaoer.wordpress. Uh, and on here, we've got more of our general resources, uh, like our blog posts, our webinar summaries. And under our resources page, we've got our toolkit and OER Commons group. And finally, the OER used in Iowa colleges spreadsheet. So you can get to that there and a few other recommended resources we've shared over the last couple of years. Perfect. Yeah, this is a good resource for you also to share out with your faculty um, if, if they have in, I, I know, explicit interest in the content. Yeah, it's always interesting to see the different classes that are more or less likely to jump into OER depending on the school. Uh, absolutely love that so many of the econ uh, first level courses in the University of Iowa are moving forward with this. But it'll be great to see more resources shared as more people find out that this spreadsheet exists and are able to add to it.
Abby, does that link allow them to contribute? Yep, it is open for anyone to edit, uh, which can be a little bit dangerous, uh, but <laughs> I, tr I trust people uh, and we've that's a part of the reason why it's also good we have the OER Commons group because it means that we can uh, have a backup of everything people have shared that's a useful resource. I think Amanda has a question. I'm just gonna say is that hand up mean uh, you have a question Amanda? I do. Um, sorry apologies I was I had to take a phone call from a faculty member in the middle of this so I might have missed this. Um, but I'm wondering if for that spreadsheet, do you pull it all from the data that is sent to the state? Because um, we had to fill out a survey, I know, last year uh, at DMAC. Um, so we you know, surveyed all of our faculty. And then I, I think that is sent out to every single, I think every single college and university in the state. And so I wondered if anything, if that was kind of funneled into this spreadsheet at all, or um, if there might be some you know, some some pieces missed, I guess, between that that data and this. <laughs> there are definitely pieces missed between that data and this. So uh, <laughs> our annual survey basically asks how many courses use OER or how many students are affected. We don't ask the specific courses, their numbers, what resources they use, in part because we don't know how many of you actually track that data or how in depth it's tracked and we can't assume that everyone's going to have that much in depth uh, data to give us. Uh, so instead what this is is it's sort of if you have this information, please include it in the spreadsheet and then we allow uh, anyone who might be a librarian or a program manager or looking over OER for their institution to add in that data of what resources are being used in what classes. I don't know if this Perfect. is a case. thank you. I don't know if this is a case, but in K twelve, once we send our data to the state, we don't get it back. I mean, we don't get to see, and so <laughs> yeah. this is probably one way that you can put them both together. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Is like, is there a way that we can get the two to you know communicate? And and like, I know we just recently started tracking a lot of the same data because once we saw Abby the spreadsheet that you had started, we were like, oh, we should be tracking that at DMAC too. So we had started just doing this survey that kind of asked some of these questions so that we could add to this resource and then also do our state um, collection for them. So I really appreciate the resource. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. All right, so let's all sort of reconvene and see, have you found anything interesting, unexpected, exciting in your little exploration of OER Commons today in our group? Or is there anything you have more questions about than answers at this point that you'd like to talk through? I was gonna mention, I found a couple open textbooks that I was not aware of before. I'm working with some teams of faculty with Abby and Mariah's help, we got a grant to um, support faculty to create new open textbooks. And they're going to be tasked before our training session with finding existing things that they might be able to use and adapt. Um, and I found at least two things that I didn't know about before that might work for those groups. So it was, and it's less overwhelming than some of the other um, OER repositories because it's, just the collection that has been used in Iowa. So I found it nice to use as a, maybe a starting point because it's just less overwhelming than going to you know all of the open textbook library or something. Um, so I had really good luck. One other thing that I'm just gonna kind of segue off that Anne-Marie is that we're, we're showing you the component that is built into OER Commons and our OER Commons hub representing Iowa, but there are hubs from a lot of other community colleges and universities out there that you're welcome to look at and see if there's anything that, as you were mentioning, that would be a starting point or something that you could take, because that's the whole point of OER is you, you are able to use and remix uh, if, if the permissions are there. So finding something else that's out there that some other uh, entity has built and then taking it and making it uniquely yours is, is always an option. Terry, you have a question? Yeah, um, 
I just found something on there that I know that a great faculty member just submitted because I helped her to, to do it. It's called um, Inter Introduction to Eating Disorders. Hmm. And I don't see it listed in the Iowa section. So, I mean, I didn't know what to how to tag her, tell her to tag it or anything. I mean, I just walk her through the creative comments. She never heard of any of that stuff. And so anyway, can we get that to be part of that somehow? And then what do I yeah. do? With, what do I do in the future, I guess? Yeah, let me go ahead. Uh, is it in OER Commons right now? It is. It's Introduction to Eating Disorders, and it's by Catherine Gillespie is her name. Okay, one moment. And while Abby does that, so Terry, the process that, that they would need to do is get the list of tags that Abby has put in the, in the um, group, add that tag to the content, and then it will be automatically added to the collection of the tag that she has put in it. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing would be if she is a member of the Iowa Un and University group, she could then add it to the group uh, in its own. And so uh, Abby is going to show you right now how is to it add. this one. Uh, yeah, it's it's that one. So you would hit save and take it to your group when you're signed in. It should pop up automatically. You can also save it into a specific area. So this might be in do health sciences. It might be in life sciences, depending on which you're more inclined to put it in. I'll put it in health sciences for now, and we can also cross list it in life sciences. The only way that that will come up under your save is if you are a member of the group. Okay. So you need to make sure that you've added yourself to the group and then that save button would give you the list of all the groups of which you are a member of and you can then save it in any of those places. Okay. Anybody can save any content in there that belong to the group. So it doesn't have to be the person that created it, um, although that would be nice because they know what the content is and where it would really belong. Yeah. And then if you want to add it to the collections, you would just add the tag that pulls it into that collection. So most of the time it is IAPS for Iowa post-secondary, and then a term like uh, health sciences might be health SCI, uh, but it's good to look up what the specific uh, tags are so you don't accidentally do it slightly off and then it doesn't show up and then you have to add a second tag that's the right one. Uh, so looking that up first so you can copy and paste it into the tags uh, will bring it into the collection apart from just the folder. Okay. It may take 24 hours for that to be added to the collection because it they have a robot that goes through and finds the tags and then throws them into the collection. So sometimes it happens really, really fast for me. Sometimes it takes longer. So just know that if it's not in the collection, it's not that it's not, will not be there. It's just, it takes a little time. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. And this is good reminder for everyone that wants to add content to either the collections or the um, group. Because this is all, it's a, it's a collaboration. Um, it, it's, it's not just a small group of people that has control. Y you have the control. Good questions. This is amazing. Good work, you guys. Yeah, it, I'm. <laughs> I'm surprised we hadn't thought of let's talk about how you add specifically to the collections and how you tag things, but I'm glad the question came up so we could cover that today. Do you feel comfortable doing the searching outside of the group or the hub? Is that something you wanted to learn more about or are you okay with that? I think <laughs> it's good to know a little bit more about, let me, let me show people uh, while we're here. So when you're within the group, you can search for shared items. Let's say I just want to know if there's something that covers food science. Uh, then you can search within it and say, oh, OK, there's a food product development lab manual. That's the one thing related to food science. Uh, but OER Commons is a really big repository. So you can also search generally for things that are available there. Now, the thing to know about OER Commons, like I mentioned earlier, is it is very popular with K-12, which means you're going to get a very wide range of education levels, and it makes filtering specifically incredibly important. Uh, so you might want to filter by community college or college upper division graduate, depending on what you're looking at. I generally stick with college, both lower and upper division, just in case, uh, because you never know, people might be discounting their work and saying, oh, it's a lower division sort of course, when really it could cover both areas. 
And now instead of just the one resource, we have 173. So there are a lot of things on this topic. It's just maybe they're not used or reported as being used in the state of Iowa. So you can do a lot more searching in OER Commons. It's just a question of how in depth do you wanna go and how much content do you feel comfortable sifting through to find exactly what you need? But yeah, that's the gist of it. Let's give you all about three more minutes just in case there's a question you might have that you have been holding off on until now and we'll get out of here a few minutes early. And we do have one more slide at the end, Abby. Oh, we do. <laughs> Denise, you'll want to share that one for us. I'll wait your three minutes and then we'll we'll try to collect some data back from you. The post test to our pretest. <laughs> Okay, I don't think anyone's going to have any questions for a whole three minutes, so let's not <laughs> wait the whole time. Okay, so our last slide is actually a Jamboard, and I don't know how many of you have explored Jamboard or not, but what we're asking you to do is to kind of process and reflect. This is going to be something that will then also help us as we think about what we need to share with, with the group. So I want you to think about what is the most important thing you learned today what you like about OER Commons or what you have you have seen in our platform, um, what might be two things you didn't know before and questions you still have. And so for those of you who worked in Jamboard, you can go ahead and, and uh, click the link on the graphic. When you get into Jamboard, what you do at the top is you click the down arrow and go ahead and click the little dots here and duplicate. So you each would have your own slide to add the content that we're asking you to do. So if I click duplicate, then I would have another one here. And then you just kind of would highlight in the text that I have there and replace that text with your thoughts. And so I'm not gonna share so you can see everybody else's work. But the idea here is that we would like to have some reflection time, uh, finding out what questions you might still have that you would like us to add. Um, that you would like us to maybe share back out with you or some some things that were, were you found that were really important to you. So if you would take a couple minutes and you can do this offline as well. You don't have to do this right now, You, but it would be wonderful if we would have some of your feedback back on this particular presentation. I think I missed a step. Um, the three dots, I yes. Put the I three dots and then four because I didn't get the duplicate option. If you click on the three dots, can you click the duplicate? I don't have duplicate. Was there a step before that though that you said? Uh, let me see where you are. Good question. There is make a copy. Is that? If you make a yeah. copy, you're making a copy of the entire uh, jam. Ah we won't have that content. So let me share my screen with you one more time and see if this helps. And so you would click the down arrow here. You, you did that. That's what I didn't do. That's ah. what, that was the step okay. right before. So there you go. Perfect. I also hadn't gotten that part. So that's good to know. <laughs> this is my first time using Jamboard. Good. We got nine of you really kind of thinking through some of these things that will help us as we move forward.
And if for some reason that you actually click and remove the box, the text box, you can add it on your own on the left. You notice that there are a bunch of other tools. There's pen tools. Uh, there's other things you can do. You can bring in images, so on and so forth. So if for some reason you remove um, a box that I've added there, just click the text box on the left and you can add your own. Is it working for people? How are we doing? I see a thumbs up or thumbs down if we're struggling or... Okay, Candace, I have thumbs up, that's good. Anybody else getting it to work or not work and just let me know how we're doing? Mine is not working. I, okay. I mean, we put a few chats in there. I don't know what's going on. I click the down button, I click the three dots, I hit duplicate. And then when I try to click on the screen where it's at, it says unable to load file. Okay, um, so are you on, um, I'm gonna add one just for you. So right now, if you go to, I'm just gonna click, I will give you the access to number nine. Let me, do, let me duplicate that. So your page number nine, I just opened up for you. Amy, just scroll to that page and you can go ahead and type in there. Someone's already typed on number nine. <laughs> okay, I will make another one for you. I, yeah, I, so it's, yeah, it's just, I've tried duplicating it about five times now and it hasn't worked at all. Okay, well, I see some, some duplicates of just general things, which I'm going to remove. So let me get you there. Okay, now I'm going to make you a number 10 and I'm going to remove what was in there. Just a second. And on yours, it should say add here on the on the text. Do you see that? Amy, is it working for you now? Yep, I see you in there. Yep, I see you moving. I'm in there. I can move it around, but I can't. Can you double can you double click in there? <laughs> Looks like you're double clicking in there. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's on now. Okay. So like does is number four open that I can use? It looks four. like looks like no one's using it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Normally when I do this, I do have people put their names in so that you know which slide is yours, but I didn't do that on this one. So my bad. It's all right. It's a learning experience for a lot of us. I see Emory did put her name on it. Thank you, Anne Marie. You got the instructions we didn't even tell you about. Well, that was for me. I feel like I must have messed up and tried, like I was on a different one and I was realizing somebody else was there. So when I duplicated, it was unclear which slide I should have been on. Sure. So sorry if I booted you out of your slide accidentally, somebody. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm already seeing some great comments on these jam boards. Yes. This will be helpful as we move forward. Um, and if there's other questions, you know, you can always come back and work on yours if that would be helpful to you or email Abby or myself um, and let us know what questions you have, Mariah, as well. So awesome. Great. Well, thanks for, for demoing this. Oh, and Mariah, we can't hear you. Oh, no, now we can. No, I was just going to say thank you for an excellent demonstration. I think this 
definitely clarified, you know, how to use the group for some people and how to how to upload new things. The tags are pretty important. Um, I noticed that comment a couple of times on these Jamboards. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about anything, um, you can feel free to reach out to Abby, Denise, or I. Um, I'll be posting the recording of this video on YouTube either today or tomorrow. So if you want to view it again or share it with, with other people at your institution or anything else, um, just look at our, our, our YouTube account and it should be there within a day. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Good day.